Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Bearcats Basketball live here on YouTube channel Bro Baruch Broadca Bearcats Broadcasting. Alongside Brian Flannery, I'm David Just, and Brian, we have another nice matchup, in-conference matchup for the Bearcats as they host Brooklyn College to the Arc Arena. Yep, and the girls have a two-game winning streak coming into the night, so hoping to keep that momentum going. So coming off a win Monday night against York College in a close nail-biting game, they host Brooklyn College 6-6 six and six on the season, 3-1 and one in the CUNYAC, and your Bearcats are 3-7 and seven on the season, 2-3 and three in the CUNYAC. Tonight, starting for your Brook for the Brooklyn College Bulldogs, number two, Michelle Pena, number 22, Taylor George, number four, Alexandra Mugen, number 25, Jasmine Hansgen, and number 33, Chanel Jamat. And for your Baruch Bearcats, starting at guard, number one, Francis Snyder, starting at the other guard, number 20, Samantha Ganko, starting at forward, number 12, Valsanya Michi, starting at the other forward, number two, Daniela Zerpolo and starting at the third forward, number 25, Melinda Spayu. So uh, as we get into the crunch time here in the season, Brian, another opportunity for Brooke really to prove themselves and jump out uh, on top of Brooklyn quick here in the early going. Yeah, I think this is a great test here for the girls tonight. Coming off these two big wins, really just to continue their uh, the great in-season adjustments they've made with some of the new additions. So uh, Brooklyn College will be a great test for the girls. Baruch this year being led by number 25, Melinda Spayu, averaging over 20, 60, 16 points a game in over 35 minutes a game. How important is, is it going to be for Melinda Spayu to, we saw last weekend against Matt Gevers, really come out to a hot start. Again, get her shooting stroke off because the two games before that, she may have struggled a bit from the floor. Yeah, Melinda's going to be huge here tonight for the, uh, for the Lady Bearcats to really... I think get it going early too, David. We want to see a nice, comfortable lead that we can control going into the later parts of the game with some of these new additions. So, yeah, I think really getting off to a good start, not just Melinda, but really the whole team just playing clean basketball, I think that's going to be key. It's going to be Jamaat and Spayu, and Brooklyn College will come away with it. It's going to be right to left for Brooklyn College, wearing their maroon away uniforms, gold trim. Baruch in their home whites going left to right, light blue trim. Ball's quickly swung around. Brooklyn College, three-pointer by Taylor George. No good. Rebounded there by Zerpolo, and she'll give it up to Snyder, and Baruch will push into the front court. Snyder goes right to the rim. Underhand layup, no good. Spy you on the rebound. Put back, and it's good. And just like that, Baruch, quick defensive stand on one end, points on the offensive end. And a steal there as Spayu comes away with the ball in the defensive end. She'll push the full length of the court, goes right to the rim. Shots off, front rim, no good, and she'll be able to get her own rebound and dribble out. Another offensive board there for the Bearcats. Snyder in the left wing. Finds Spayu in the top of the key. Up top to Genko. Genko straight away three. Shot off, rebound, no good. Rebound by Hansgen there underneath. And it'll be Brooklyn to push with Pena. Three-pointer there by Alexander Mugen is no good. Ball's batted around. It's still loose underneath. It's going to be Genko hits the deck, gives it off to Spayu, and Baruch are going to run again. Bounce pass in Snyder. Go looking for Snyder underneath with Spayu intercepted there by Jamat, and Brooklyn College will come away with it. Crossover move, Genko on Jamat. Gives it to George. George inside to Hansgen. Nice spin around jumper there with the left hand and able to tie the game at two a minute and a half gone here in the first Snyder has it gives it up to Genko up top looking for options back to Snyder left wing she's quickly double team Brooklyn in the 2-3 zone up top to Genko bounces around Snyder now left wing three able to knock that one down nice shot there by Francis Snyder a quick bucket and coach Alex Lang wants a timeout with 8-0-8 remaining here in the first. Baruch lead 5-2. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. So a quick start there, Brian, for the Bearcats and really able to knock down a couple shots, but more impressively, a couple defensive stands, even when letting up the rebound, not allowing that second opportunity. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to see, really to start this game. Kind of set the tone early and, and let's just work with a comfortable lead here throughout the game. And Melinda Spayu already wreaking havoc, and I don't know if it's she's getting positioning underneath on the offensive end. Already two quick offensive boards. Yeah. Is it more about the effort here in the early going for Brooklyn? Yeah, I think um, I 
think we have a good game plan going going into this game here. As you can see by the first couple opening possessions of the scheme that we're putting out really seems to be working against Brooklyn early on. Now George has it. Baruch came with the press and Brooklyn's able to get it into the front court. Ball's quickly moved, moved around. Now it's hands get inside. Lay up high off the glass. No good. Michi getting going to touch it last and it's going to stay with Brooklyn underneath. I can see how uh, that the forward threat from uh, hands getting down in the paint might be an issue for the Bearcats though. A little bit of a size deficit. Three pointer there by Mugen able to knock that one down in the corner. Alexandra Mugen knocks her first bucket down. Now Genko has it up top looking for options. going to be Snyder right wing. Bounce pass inside. It's going to be a kick ball against Hansgen, and it'll be Baruch's side out underneath the basket. Yeah, you want to see a little bit of a better pass there from Francis Snyder going into the paint, but I like the aggressive at uh, attack from the Bearcats. They're really putting the pressure on Brooklyn. Inbound there to Michi up top, and she takes too many steps. We're definitely going to hope to minimize uh, little mistakes like that, David. we got to play definitely a clean brand of basketball here. Brooklyn College, Bulldogs coming in at 6-6, six 3-1 six, Cuniac. Definitely a tough, tough uh, opponent. And it's going to be a team that you're going to only hurt yourself if you make uh, you unforced errors. Yeah. Excuse me. As uh, Mugen comes away with it. Oh, sorry, Genko comes away with it for Baruch. Zerpolo wide open down in the paint. Can't get that one to go. Melinda with the follow-up rebound. And once again, Br Brooklyn's defense really not collapsing when the ball goes up in the air there and able to find not only Zerpolo, but Spy was able to come back with the Wide open rebound to finish. Yeah, that's great to see. Like we said before the tip off, Melinda kind of settling in early on, finding her momentum in this game. It's going to be huge, and she's done exactly that. Pena now over to Mugen. Mugen's going to drive into the paint, off glass, able to finish. Just no weak side help defense when Mugen got into the paint. 7-7, seven, seven, a little bit more than three minutes gone here in the first. High, quick pace game so far. Snyder's left wing jump shot's no good. It'll be Mugen on the rebound, and Brooklyn look to push, but Spayu comes back and intercepts the ball, and it, the tempo keeps it going. Spayu right into the lane, off glass, no good, around and out. And Taylor George gets the rebound, and Brooklyn look to push. Brian, the tempo's been nonstop since the beginning of this game here. Oh, the, they have not stopped moving up and down the court. I think that's what you want to see out of both sides. Next possession, though, I think maybe we should slow down a little bit, try to get it off of quality. Well, do you feel shot, that yeah. this tempo is playing into kind of what Brooklyn College is wanting to do? And uh, I think I think we're setting a lot of this tempo, too. A couple quick turnovers and really just trying to make something happen. But you like to see the aggressiveness out of the girls. So now Mugen has a left wing. A couple changes for Brooklyn College as Martina Espina comes in and number 11, Kel Kayla Trembone. As there's going to be an offensive foul there on Chanel Jamat underneath. Yeah, Melinda's great at taking charges. Uh, we've seen pretty much, I'd say once a game, and uh, we'll see it here early on. It's a great job by Melinda. Self selfless play. Valmichi, right wing three, off front rim, no good. Rebounded, still loose on the board. It's going to be Daniela Zerpolo who comes away with it. Now Snyder has it in the corner, chucks a three. A little too strong on that one as the rebound comes away with hands getting into the front court for Brooklyn College. Mugen has it. She's going to drive cross-court pass to Martina, Martinez Espina. Espina, excuse me. Corner three there by Mugen. Her shot no good. Rebounded there by Hansgen, but she's stripped by Genko. And Genko pushes the pace into the front court. Genko takes it into the right corner. She's double teamed, gives it inside to Zerpolo. Over to Spayu. Back out right wing to Genko. Genko's going to drive up top to Michi. Michi looking for options. It's Genko up top. Trembone on her. Brooklyn still settling into this 2-3 zone. Finds their polo underneath. Ball's knocked away, and it's going to go back to Baruch underneath with only three seconds left on the shot clock as Millie Yee checks into the game for Val Michi. Inbound here. It's going to be Zerpolo up top. Two seconds. Puts up the shot. Nice floater there by Daniela Zerpolo, able to beat the shot clock. Baruch Lee 9 to 7 midway through the first. Trembone has it. Snyder on her. Jamak comes for the pick. Doesn't use it. Martinez Espina. Espina, excuse me. 
Jamat now dribbles out. Thinks about the three, takes the three. Zerpolo lets her have the shot, but rebound there by Brooklyn College. Martina, Martinez Espina. And a nice play there by Ch Chanel Denmott, Jamat, excuse me, on the back door. Wide open for that lay-in. Only listed at five foot nine. She definitely seems a little bit taller out there on the court. Definitely bringing some size to the to the Brooklyn College interior. Yeah, and just like that, she blocks Millie Yee going up for the layup. Now Trembone has it. Gives it over to Mugen. Mugen, right wing three. She's been pulling all night. But Brooklyn able to corral the offensive board and able to keep it going. Trembone over to Mugen. Mugen's going to travel before she drives, and it'll go back to Baruch. And David, uh, we're really seeing some of that uh, the height difference in that forward position early on from Brooklyn. Uh, getting a couple key rebounds, keep them in those possessions, ultimately finishing. But um, it's just going to be, I think we're going to have to pay a little bit more attention to the forwards moving forward. Definitely with the size difference that yeah. Brooklyn College comes in against playing with Baruch. You have to wonder if that'll give Baruch trouble as they start to wind, uh, uh, get grind down later in the game. As Spayu's pass is intercepted. And the foul's going to be at number 20, Samantha Genko, on the transition. So it'll go back. It'll be Brooklyn College inbounds on the far side. So Trent Bone has it now. It's Taylor George recently checked back in for Brooklyn. Her inbounds pass to Hanskin is knocked away, and it'll be Baruch to push again. Millie Yee brings it up, looking for options. Has their polo now inside to Snyder. Up top to Yee, almost thrown away. Yee has to corral it. Instead, George comes away with it. It'll be Brooklyn College and Taylor George all the way. And able to lay it in, take the lead, 11-9. Brooklyn's going to call another timeout here. And it's going to be timeout for Alex Lang with... 312 remaining here in the first. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcat Broadcasting. In New York City, there is a place for people that want to be a part of something bigger than themselves. Where if you work hard, the possibilities are endless. A place to learn, train, and play. In that order. The City University of New York Athletic Conference. This is where it all comes together. Find your people, be a part of a team, and don't just play the game, change the game. Champions aren't born. They're and welcome back to the Arc Arena alongside Brian Flannery. I'm David Justin. Baruch trailing by two with three minutes remaining here in the first. It'll be Snyder on the right wing. Looking for options. Martinez Espina on her, and it'll be Mugen that comes away with the steal. Taylor George up ahead, able to lay it in. Looks like she might have drawn some contact there from Millie Yee. No call, and, Br and Brooklyn will have a four point lead. Spy you right into the paint, looking for options. Gives it off floater to Zapolo. Her shot no good. Mugen comes away with the rebound, and Brooklyn to push again. Martinez Espina. Takes the three, no shot, uh, no good. Rebounded there by Mugen. Her shot's a little short, and Genko comes away with the rebound for Baruch. And Brian, just like that, the tempo's still moving at a fast pace. Yeah, real back and forth game here early on. And it'll be out, it'll be a foul, excuse me, on number 11, Kayla Trembone, the freshman guard from Port Richmond High School. Checking into the game for the Bearcats, number 15, Natalie Ebelhaupt, as Daniela Zerpolo comes to the bench. Ball goes right out of bounds right in front of us. And it'll be Brooks' ball right in front of us. Sorry about that. Looking for the ball at our feet. That's Spy will inbound for the Bearcats. Looking for options. Ebelhaupt hands off to Genko. Nice pick there by Ebelhaupt. Able to, Genko able to rub her defender right off of Ebelhaupt. Now Ebelhaupt up top. No, he's going to be Yee into the paint. Had Ebelhaupt up top instead, try taking herself. She gets fouled. Nice play there by Millie Yee, and she'll go to the line to shoot two. Fouls on number 11, Kayla Trembone. 
her second foul in a matter of minutes. First shot good for Millie Yee. Coach Berg of Brooklyn College wanting a little explanation on the last foul there. Yeah. Brooklyn bench not too happy with that call. Yee two of two from the line. Checking into the game for Brooklyn College. Number two, Michelle Pena. Kayla Trembone will come to the bench after her two quick fouls. Bearcats looking for a defensive stop here. George with the ball left wing. Mugen offers herself and said it'll be Martinez Espina left wing. Now Martinez Espina. Right wing jumper. Her shot no good. Rebounded there by deep rebound by Snyder. If Espina waited for it, she might have been able to get her own rebound. Spayu circles back and it'll, she'll set up the offense up top. Hands get on her. Millie Yee comes across, gives it off to Millie Yee. It's going to be right back to Spayu. Spayu gets stripped by Hanskin and it'll be Pena to push. Pena going coast to coast, tries to give it outside to George, but Snyder comes away with the steal and she's looking for options as she brings it up the court. Snyder a couple crossover moves right into the lane, kicks it outside to Yee. Baseline jumper off left rim, no good, and Hanskin comes away with the rebound for the Bulldogs. Pena has it. Hands gets, takes the, gives the pick left. Pena into the paint. And it's going to go off Applehop last, and it'll stay with the Bulldogs. 19 seconds on the shot clock for the Bulldogs as Chanel, Chanel Jamet checks back into the game for Brooklyn. Coming to the bench, number 25, Jasmine Hansgen. Bayou saves from going out of bounds. Tries to throw it off a Brooklyn College player there. I believe Mugen underneath. Jamet still has her own rebound and can't finish. Again and again, she gets three offensive boards. And it's going to be... It's going to be out of bounds on Jamet after all that. But what a play there by Chanel Jamet. She's continuously getting her own rebound. Unfortunately, not able to get her shot to fall. Ebelhoff's pick comes right. Here's Spayu now right into the lane. Spin move. And goes off her leg last, and it'll stay with Brooklyn College. An unforced turnover there by Baruch. It'll be Pena right wing, Snyder on her. Snyder picking her, forcing her out to the circle. Espina three from the corner is good, able to knock that one down and extend the lead to five. Baruch can hold for the last shot, and here comes Spayu, wide open back door. And she gets fouled by Mugen as her shot goes up no good, so it'll be Spayu at the line for two. And Baruch, instead of holding for the last shot, able to push as they see the Brooklyn College defense falling asleep. Yeah, the Bulldogs were a little slow to get back on defense there in transition. Melinda kind of took advantage of that, forced the quick foul from Brooklyn. No one's worried, more worried about who's picking up whose person yeah. rather than getting back and, and picking up the ball as Spayu's off on the first free throw. But yeah, definitely really, really fast-paced first quarter here from both sides. Now the real question is if that pace of play will continue throughout three more quarters. 16 seconds left. Pena has it on the right wing, takes the pick left from Jamet. It'll be Taylor George's left wing three, off back rim, no good. Snyder comes away with the rebound. Baruch have to push from five. Four, three, two, Snyder. So Yee, shot, no good, and that'll do it for the end of the first quarter. Baruch 12, Brooklyn College 16. Baruch trail by four here at the Arc Arena. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting.
sport I love to have the professors know me on a per and Welcome back to the Arc Arena. Baruch Trail by four after one, 16 to 12. And it's been an exciting pace game here in the first quarter, Brian, as Baruch really able to match tempos and even dictate tempo sometimes against these Bulldogs. Yeah, this is definitely the fastest pace of play we've probably seen all season. And just yeah. like that, Melinda Spayu with a quick inbound, layup off glass, and that is good. As Jamet hits the deck. And a nice start there of the second quarter for the Bearcats. Quick start, too. Pena now trying to find Jamet inside, forced the pass, ball stolen. Spayu comes away with it, it's Millie Yi. Ooh, almost traveled there, gives it up top to Snyder, around to Ebelhoff, right wing jumper. No good, however, Millie Yi able to attack the boards and come away with it. Ebelhoff over to Genko, swung around. Genko into the paint, now to Spayu, almost loses it there. Snyder, left wing three, front rim, no good. Rebound there as Ebelhoff hit the deck. It's gonna be Jamet that comes away with it and Pena will push for Brooklyn. Yeah, great possession by the Bearcats there. Unfortunately, unable to convert, but good ball movement. Now, Jamet working on Spayu. Shot no good, and Spayu's done a great job tonight on Chanel Jamet, giving up some size. Wow. To the 5'9 sophomore. What a move by Melinda Spayu. And that move will tie up the game there with and a chance to go for a three point play. Yes, sir. Foul's going to be on number 15. Grace Martinez Espina, the senior guard from Freeport, New York. And a quick 5-0 run to start the quarter would be a great 4-0 run. Nonetheless, it's still a great yeah. way to start the quarter. Absolutely. As Taylor George will push the ball for Brooklyn College. Crossover move. Has E on her. Pena now left wing. Calling out Coach Lang's offense. Nice play there by Pena, crossover move, able to go around Genko and Ebelhaupt and get to the rim. 18-16, Brooklyn lead. Ball being moved around the offensive end for Baruch. Millie has it now. Picks up her dribble, gives it off to Ebelhaupt. It's going to go off Ebelhaupt. Ebelhaupt's toe last, and it'll go back to Brooklyn College as Daniela Zarpolo checks back into the game as Ebelhaupt will come to the bench. For Baruch, it's Genko, Yi, Snyder, Zerpolo, and Spayu as Pena brings up the ball for Brooklyn College. Looking for options, finds Jamet on the top of the key. And Brian, how tiring it has to be for Spayu con consistently on Jamet and banging around in the paint. I was just thinking that. Melinda's listed 5-6. Uh, she's playing the forward position. Looks like she's playing a 4 right now. Uh, and, yeah, guarding, guarding a girl who's probably 4 or 5 inches taller than her. Um, it's definitely going to get to you, but Melinda's done a great job, really kind of risen to this occasion. It's a challenge, but she's uh, she's doing a great job with it. Definitely handle her, handling her own under yeah. there and even uh, out-rebounding her and out-hustling her. Yeah, on getting occasions. a lot of rebounds too, which you figure, um, obviously with the height deficit, would favor Brooklyn there, but Melinda's saw, just kind of out-hustling right now. We saw this a little bit on Saturday too. It's really where, where are they going to catch the ball and where yeah. are you going to make them start their possession? Jamet is not effective really, hasn't been effective tonight from the free throw line jumper as a three-pointer there by Mugen is good from the right wing. But Jamet's not going to be effective from the three-point line or the top of the key. She's going to want to definitely catch the ball more in that yeah, low in post. Paint. And where we saw before, she was able to get off at the rebounds even on her missed shot. Nice play there by Spayu with the up-and-under layup. And Brooklyn gets called with a travel there. Bearcats will get possession back underneath Brooklyn's. <laughs> Kayla Trembone checking into the game as Michelle Pena comes to the bench. Rook trail by three, 21 to 18. Yeah, hopefully the Bearcats can convert on that turnover here. Genko's looking for the open girl. Finds Melinda. Hand off to Zerpolo. She's picked up by Jamet. Picks up her dribble as Valmichi just checks back into the game. It's covered by Mugen on the right wing. Crossover, takes the pick from Spayu. Hansgen comes out to help. It's Zerpolo in the corner now. Jamet all over her. Good defense here by Brooklyn College as Valmichi goes into the lane, able to carve him up a little bit right as I was saying it and finish off the glass. Nice play by Valmichi once great. again, yeah. keeping up that aggression that we may have seen over the last few games. And it's great to see that out of Valmichi. 
And there it was there. Jermette lays it in there. And if you, you catch the ball, if, Jermette, if Chanel Jermette catches the ball inside of three feet, she's going to be able to finish every time. I mean, you're talking about a three feet from the basket. We saw it before. She caught the ball three feet from the basket, put up a layup, missed, and then three separate occasions yeah, were able to get out on offensive rebound, rebound. Which, rebound. Which was impressive within itself. So, well, we're di really going to have to do a good job of kind of even potentially double teaming in the paint there. But Melinda's done a great job um, really early on here holding her own down in the paint. So Baruch lead 23-20 to 20 with 6.45 remaining here in the second. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. And the second, third game, actually, of what has been a very busy week for Baruch Basketball. The ladies so far, two, both teams actually, 2-0 and uh, two and on the week. Yep. And you're talking about the continues this weekend on Saturday against Lehman College. Definitely come out for it. It's alumni day here at the ARC Arena. First, that the women's game will be at 12 o'clock again, home against Lehman. We'll have the alumni game not broadcasted, unfortunately, because we'll have a lot of ex great ex-players there, but uh, more for fun and shenanigans than some basketball. Yep, and then followed by the men's men's game against Lehman at 4 p.m. Definitely tune in a little bit before that. At 3.40, we're going to have the banner raising ceremony honoring former athletic director Ray Rankis, who passed away, unfortunately, this summer. Now Snyder has it up top as we're back underway here at the Arc Arena. Spy you on the, in the corner, takes the pick from Michi. Spy you right into the lane. Jamet two-handed block there, and a little bit immovable is Jamet when you're trying to go up and into her in the paint. Now Trembone has it up top. Jamet inside, gets the spin on Spy you, finds Mugen cutting back door. And nice play there. By Jamet to find the cutting Mugen. It'll be Snyder now up top, right into the lane against Trembone. A little too strong. Rebounded there by Hanskin. And now up top to, excuse me, Mugen, who's unable to finish at the rim, and Baruch will keep the tempo pushed. Spy you on the left wing, looking for options. Spin move. Bounce pass out to Zerpolo. Looking for options, finds Michi in the corner. She's on the baseline, now up top to Snyder. Ball's quickly swung around, now it's Genko, left wing. Shot's no good, off near rim. Mugen comes away with the rebound for the Bulldogs. Brooklyn lead by five, 5.35 remaining here in the half. Trembone has it now up top for Brooklyn College. Now Jamet has it up top, spy you on her, and this is where you want Jamet really holding the ball and eliminating her access inside the paint. Now George, right past a couple of defenders, able to split, I think, Zerpolo and Genko and spy you a little bit late there on the help. Now be spy you into the front court, working on Hansgen. Crossover move, now into the paint, gives it outside to Val Michi. Puts it on the deck, almost loses it there. She'll go baseline, block from behind, and she gets fouled. Foul's going to be on number four, 33, excuse me, Chanel Jamet. It looks like the foul's from behind. It was actually underneath. That's going to be Jamet's second as Val Michi will go to the line to shoot two. Sixty-three percent free throw shooter on the season. Michi knocks down the first. Jamet comes to the bench as does Zerpolo for Baruch. Millie Yee into the game for the Bearcats. Kelly Teitler, a six foot three freshman, into the game for Brooklyn College. She'll get the rebound for the Bulldogs. Hanjin inside, working on Millie Yee. Nice post move there by Hanjin, able to finish with the soft left hand. Snyder brings it up court. Has played every minute here in the opening of the opening 15 that we've played. It's going to be a travel on Spy U at the elbow, and it'll be a turnover for Baruch as the ball goes back to Brooklyn College, who lead by eight with 427 remaining. These are some of the errors that you really can't compound with um, if you want to have a chance to stay in this game because exactly. Brooklyn's going to make you pay at the offensive end. Yeah. Now George has it left wing, looking for options. Tytler comes over to set the pick right, but George doesn't use it, goes left. High floater, no good. Tyler gets her own, gets the rebound, gets another rebound, and there's really no one to compete with that size as she gets the third rebound to go in off glass. And Coach Kocherzos wants to talk things over 
with the Bearcats who trail by 10 now. And Brian, it's been a quick opening of this game in the last few minutes. It's been Tyler, Jamet, and Mugen really uh, affecting the offensive proceedings for Brooklyn. Yeah, talking about the 4-5 uh, position from Brooklyn, we mentioned that earlier in the broadcast, and now we're starting to see that that height deficit kind of play out to Brooklyn's favor. So I also think it's just a little bit matter of Brew kind of catching their breath here because even though they're not as tall as the other girls, they've really just been working extra hard to kind of out-rebound, out-hustle them. So you can see they're uh, it's definitely taking a little bit of a toll here, but hopefully they can turn the ship around going into the second half. Yeah, and I mean, yeah. honestly, at, at the point where you have Kelly Tyler coming in the game, six foot three freshman, it's going to be hard to match up on that because you're talking about a Baruch team where they're not really going to play size, and Ebelhop doesn't even really play that that traditional center position at exactly. five foot ten. The ball quickly swung around. It's Snyder over to Genko now to Val Michi in the corner. Michi's going to drive, draw some contact, no foul, and it's going to be no good as Tyler comes away with the rebound. And you got to be start hitting your shots because Brooklyn's going to have a rebounding advantage right now with Hansgen and Tyler in as Hansgen's layup's no good. Snyder comes away yeah. with that rebound. Yeah, Brooke got away with one there with the wide open layup. Now Millie Yee baseline. Knocks that one down. Nice shot there by Millie Yee and a big basket there for the Bearcats. Yeah, nice floater. Now Trambone has it, now Tyler has it, gives it inside to Hansgen, and that's going to be a dangerous proceedings if you want to play like that. Tyler, Hansgen from Tyler. And a lot of size here for the Bear, uh, for the Bulldogs. Valmichi has it now left wing, looking for options. Ball stolen there by Taylor George. She's going to go coast to coast and able to finish off glass. Extending the lead to 12, 35-23. Can't go up top, Millie Yee, right wing. Back to Yee on the right wing, now over to Snyder in the corner. Looking for options, it's gonna be Genko inside. She gets bumped. And Taylor George has been a problem for the Bearcats early on here in the first half. Seeing she's made a couple turnovers right around half court there and converted all of her layups. Not sure how many points she has on the day, David. But it's definitely, yeah, it's definitely been a problem for this Bearcats and she's really kind of led this Brooklyn charge. Couple big momentum plays there. Inbound there to Zerpolo. Zerpolo's gonna get at top of the key. She'll put up a shot a little bit short. Gets her own rebound. Snyder pulls a right wing three, knocks that one down. Nice shot there by Francis Snyder, her second three of the game. And that's exactly what you need if you're the Bearcats. You Want to kind of cut this deficit down going into halftime. Jamet now with Tytler on the court, giving. Brooklyn even more size. Pena from George. Now to Jamet. Swung around. Espina has it now. Back up top to Pena. Look, Tyler wants it inside. She's calling for it. Gives it outside to Pena. Straight away three. Moving Baruch side to side. It's going to be a rebound knocked around, and George comes away with it. Almost loses the ball there, but Pena has it up top. Ball swung around. Espina. Now George inside to Jamet. Jamet, excuse me. And able to finish. Left wing now to Millie Yee as she takes too many steps when she catches, able to knock that one down, but it won't count. 37-26, Baruch trail, 144 remaining here in the in the half. It'll be Pena for the Bulldogs. George has it left wing. Cross to Espina on the right wing. Back to George, full cross court passes, left wing three. No good, rebounded though by Espina, and Brooklyn College will get a fresh 30. Pena up top, and she's gonna travel before she puts the ball on the deck. She might have had open lane there though, Brian, to get to the rim. Yeah, good look, and just good overall ball movement there by uh, Brooklyn, getting a couple offensive rebounds, swinging it around. Some good takes. Again, Brook looking for a couple baskets here going into the half. Millie has it left wing three. A little short after she knocked down the first one, that, the last one that didn't count. And it'll be Jamat on the run. Her ball gets stripped. It'll be Spy who hits the deck. Jamat's on the floor too. And it's going to be jump ball. Possession arrow is going to stay with Brooklyn College. And Jin and Mugen checking into the game as Tyler and Jamat take a seat. 
And Spina to inbound in front of Baruch's bench. He'll be Pena up top. Go zone B right now. Zone B, alley up, alley up, alley up, alley up. Coach Bur Lang calling out the offense for Brooklyn College right in front of us. As George has it now. And Mugen swung around to Spina. Left, wing th left corner three. Excuse me, no good. Rebounded far side by Zerpolo. And she's quick to push. Zerpolo right into the lane. Wild shot. Looked like she hit the deck hard. She pops right back up as her shot's no good. And it'll be Pena up to Espina. Espina looking for options. Crossover move back outside the Pena. Pena going to drive. Ebelhoff closes out. Not in time, though, as Brooklyn able to knock that one down and extend the lead to 13. Baruch can hold for the final shot. 15 seconds remaining here in the half. And Spayu almost turned it over there right in front of us. Now Snyder, high floater, off back rim, no good. Ebelhoff able to rebound. Yee up top, straight away three as time expired, no good. And you can see the frustration on Millie Yee's face after that shot came off. Might have got it off the, before the buzzer either way, no good. And Baruch will be trailing by 13 as we go to half. But definitely got to be upset if your coach coaches those here at the end of that first half and yes. really struggling probably in those last five minutes of the second quarter. Yeah, we saw the uh, defense kind of break down there, unfortunately. So... Good first quarter out of the Bearcats, really fast-paced play. Um, unfortunately, Brooklyn kind of wore them down a little bit, it looks like. Ultimately kind of broke away here with the 13-point deficit going into the half. So now it's just kind of a matter of going into the locker room, making these adjustments, and coming out that second half for a game plan for th the difference in the forward position. Yeah, and that's really what it has to yeah. be. I mean, you're talking about Mugen and then Jamat and then Hansjin, and then on top of all that, bringing in Titler off the bench. If you're only going to have one or two ladies on the Baruch side that can really cover that 4-5 position and like spy you and Ebelhoff, they're going to get worn out quickly and you can kind of see some of those tired legs at the end of the second quarter. Exactly. So it's going to be a matter of kind of changing up our scheme to really defend those those 4-5 positions in this second half here. And you almost wonder how you do it. And yeah. I think the best way to do it is make it more of a tr maybe a, ma a transition game mm -hmm. and force those bigs to run a little bit. Yeah. And that way you're really able to get them into a game maybe that they're not accustomed with because when Brooklyn's able to just settle down and in set paint, up in yeah. their half-court offense, yep. they've seemed unstoppable here in the late part part of the second quarter. And it definitely speaks towards their system. They they obviously know what they're good at, and they're they're using it here. And if you're talking about three of their top five scores being Jamat, Hansjin, and Mugen when Taylor George has eight points as their second scorer, she also has eight assists, uh, four assists, excuse me. So you can see how she's probably our, she's been the primary ball handler, really able to hurt us in transition and really get the ball to some of her big scores underneath. Yeah, exactly. We've seen that a couple times over um, in this in this first half. So again, uh, we talk about it's a game of adjustments, a game of momentum. So we're going to have to come out here in the second half, make the adjustments, and hopefully kind of regain some of this momentum back. And we've seen Spyu, I think, being that dominant defender. Well, not. She's been the primary defender on yes. some of the bigs, whether it be Jamat, Titler. However, that's given Mugen a little bit more room to operate from outside the paint, not really having someone to follow her around the court as, you know, I think Spyu's more suited as a, you know, a wing defender. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, Mugen's able to knock down her shots. Two of six from three so far, but 10 and seven in only 17 minutes. Yeah, so again, we, we've seen Melinda have to kind of shift towards that 4-5 position, even though she's more of a traditional guard. And she's really, she really did a commendable job here in the first half defending those four fives from Brooklyn. But again, David, uh, it's just you know, like you said, that left some openings out on the perimeter, and Brooklyn kind of took advantage of that. So uh, we're going to see what Coach Katrozos and his staff can draw up here and hopefully kind of end this Brooklyn offensive attack. I wouldn't even mind seeing like maybe a Val Michi or a Millie Yee also get thrown at them. Just give them different looks and different bodies. Natalie Ebelhalt have her, she has length. She's able to get into at least the shooter's faces. Absolutely. And try to close out on some of these players because Spayu, you're asking her from her to do it on the defensive end, but she's also leading your team with 11 points. So to yeah. have that much output on both ends. That's and a that lot much, to ask. Exactly. So yeah. I just don't think, I think Coach Kocherzos really has to figure out how they're going to defend, mm -hmm. maybe taking Spayu off because they seem to be going right after her. And yeah. obviously it's hurt, it's affecting Baruch's offensive production on the other end. Exactly. It's not sustainable to be able to be the primary defender and offensive threat on the team. So to try to mix it up a little bit here and hopefully kind of reamp this uh, Bearcats offense would be great going into this second half. So that's going to do it for us for the first half. We'll be back in about 10 minutes for the, the start of your second half. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting.
Welcome back to the ARC Arena here on the campus of Baruch College. We're about two minutes away from the start of the second half here in the first game of our double header. Baruch Trail 39 to 26 alongside Brian Flannery. I'm David Justin. Brian, it's been really a tale of two quarters, really. Baruch really holding their own in the first quarter and struggling a little bit with some of the bigs in the second. Yeah, they came out and really had a good start. Really nice momentum. Fast paced uh, play in the first quarter. Unfortunately, towards the last five minutes of the second quarter, Brooklyn really kind of pulled away, created a pretty sizable deficit now go, uh, for the second half. Brooks trailing by 13. So hoping to right the ship, so to speak, and uh, come out with this new changed up game plan and hopefully have an answer for these Brooklyn Bulldogs. Yeah, we talked about Chanel Jamat, Kelly Teitler, but Alexander Mugen really having her way in the first quarter and so is number, excuse me, number 22, Taylor George, eight points, four assists in the in the first half. Mugen coming out 10 points, seven boards, so it's really going to be important to stop that inside-out game of Brooklyn College. Yeah, they've had really some, some really good ball movement all around the, um, not only the perimeter, but also the inside, so tough uh, tough offense to try to silence here, but Coach Cachozos and his staff uh, had the halftime, so hopefully they came up with a little bit of an answer here, and now it's just up to the girls to execute. Coach Lang and his staff comes back onto the court. We're about 25 seconds away from the start of the second half. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats broadcasting. And it's going to be an important start here to the third quarter. As If you're Baruch, you really need some quick buckets and a, and a few defensive stands just to keep this game close so you can make your move here late in the third going into the fourth quarter. Absolutely, David. So Brooklyn College in their away maroon uniforms, gold letters, Baruch in their home whites, light blue trim. And it's going to be Baruch's ball on the far side. They're going to go right to left here in the second half. And Brooklyn College, of course, going left to right. Val Michi to inbound. It's going to be Michi, Genko, Spayu, Snyder, and Zerpolo going up against George, Hansjin, Mo Mugen, Pena, and Jamat for Brooklyn College, and the foul on the, there is going to be on number 22, Taylor George. That's going to be her first. You didn't, you didn't think she lost the ball? Spayu now has a left wing, takes the pick from Michi, and it's going to be an offensive foul on number 12, Val Michi, a moving screen and not the start you wanted if you're Coach Kotrazos. George to inbound, it'll be Pena in the backcourt, and Baruch going with the full court press. Pena goes past Snyder and Michi, finds Hansgen underneath, and able to finish around Spayu. Quick bucket there for Brooklyn College. Snyder picks up her dribble, and balls, George rips the ball from her. Nice up and under move, and Taylor George able to lay it in. It's going to be a timeout for Coach Kocherzos. 36 seconds in, Brian, and that's not the start you wanted if you're Coach Kocherzos and the Baruch Bearcats. No, definitely not the stop start you wanted. Not only did Brooklyn kind of have their way again on the inside, but a couple unforced, unforced turnovers there for, for the Bearcats. So not what you need here in this situation when you're trying to shorten this deficit. It was an offensive foul on one end by Michi and then a strip from Snyder here in midcourt. So it's just a couple back-to-back -back plays that just giving Brooklyn those extra possessions. Yeah. And when you're coming in trailing th by 13 in the second half. Not what you need. Can't afford extra possessions at this point in the ball game. Exactly. Snyder to the bench as Millie Yee checks into the game. Bayou has it in the backcourt, two, two woman game with Genko. Now it'll be Millie Yi trying to break down this press up top to Valmichi, inside to Spayu. Bounce pass to Zerpolo, able to lay it in off glass. Nice breakdown of the zone there by Baruch. Taylor George gives it back to Jamat. Jamat has Michi on her, pass up ahead to Pena. Two back to back full court presses by both teams. As Jamat has it now up top of the free throw line, finds Hansjin behind. 
Michi is able to lay it in off the glass. Nice play there by Chanel Jamat to find Hans Jin underneath. Jamat steals the ball from Zerpolo. Another turnover there by Baruch. Zerpolo steals it right back. Gives it up to Millie Yi. Ball is battled for, and it's going to be Pena who comes away with it for Brooklyn College. And George thinks about the three, almost moves her feet, puts the ball on the deck. It'll be Pena up top now for Brooklyn. Inside for Hans Jin, a little too high. Coach Lang wanting Brooklyn College to keep up the aggressive play as Ebelhaupt and number 40, Caitlin Rivera, check into the game for Baruch. Bounce pass inside to Ebelhaupt, looking for options. It's going to be Rivera, high off glass. Nice play there by Caitlin Rivera, good find by Ebelhaupt, and a little life pushed into this team from some subs by Coach Cochrezos. Now Jamat gives it off to George in the corner. Spy you on her. Now Rivera inside. Jamat in, even further inside. Now it's going to be a timeout for Coach Lang and this Brooklyn College Bulldog team. And a nice little run there of their own for Baruch as they are able to make a couple stops on the defensive end, score a couple baskets, but still trail by 17 here in the early going in the third. Yeah, they looked a little better there, executed their plan better, but unfortunately, again, Brooklyn just really kind of breaking away with this one, those inside post moves, and really just no answer from the Bearcats. And we see how Hanjin and Mugen both create position on two plays there, able to find opportunities by the paint. Yeah, and not only just the height deficit, but they were putting on great moves with the Bearcats. A couple nice inside fakes and even uh, the up and under there. So not only just height, but also really good kind of awareness within the within the paint and nice nice finishes there from Brooklyn. It'll be Baruch's ball underneath their own basket, ready to inbound. It'll be Ebelhaupt for the Bearcats. Genko has it now, gives it off to Ebelhaupt. Now to spy you up to Zerpolo, who will bring it into the front court. Good job there by Baruch to break down the press. Now Rivera has it in the corner, gives it over to Zerpolo. Excuse me, Genko, now be spy you up top. Looking for options, gives it off to Genko. Genko's gonna drive. And she gets fouled as her shot goes up and that'll send Samantha Genko to line to shoot two. Genko a 77% free throw shooter on the season. Genko knocks down the first. 47-31, Baruch trail. Seven and a half remaining here in the third. Jenko no Genko knocks down the second. It'll be Pena to walk it up and Baruch fall away from the full court press. Pena now inside to Hanjin and once again, just positioning off that wing side defender, really able to create space and lay it in for Hanjin. Now Rivera gets the pass, she's fouled. Foul's gonna be number 22, Taylor George. They're pulling an inbound, it'll be Genko with the ball. In the backcourt, Taylor George on her. Genko picks up her dribble, George all over her. Looking for options, it'll be Spyu now left wing. Hands in on her, pick from Rivera. Spyu goes into the paint. Looks like she created some contact, not enough for a foul. Jamak comes away with the steal, up top to George. George hits the deck as well, no foul call there. And Rivera comes away with the rebound. It's gonna be a travel on Spyu and it'll be back to Brooklyn College. So even when Baruch makes a quality defensive play, they're almost giving the ball right back with a costly turnover. Yeah, I think you just got to slow it down there, kind of regroup, let the offense get down the court and have a better possession than that because a, a couple of these quick turnovers have been rushed and in turn the Bearcats turned over. A lot of also in the middle section of the court. Yeah, it's been a, a lot of much of a midfield of a game here yeah. when a lot of quick successive turnovers going back and forth. They'll be Mugen inbound on the far side. Trembone who just checked back into the game for Brooklyn College has it up top. Mugen looking for an option. Trembone over to Hanjin. George in the corner. Ball swung around. It's Mugen, left wing three. Don't want to leave her open. Off front rim. Ball's batted around. And it's going to go off Kaitlyn Rivera last as 
Her and Emily Rivera are both battling for that rebound with Jamat. Jamat has been a handful tonight for a few ladies down in the paint. Inbound, it's going to be George in the corner. Three wide open, and she knocks that one down. Taylor George giving her 13 on the evening. Six of 11 from the field. Once again, Baruch getting themselves into some trouble, and the foul is going to be there on number 22, Taylor George. That's going to be Taylor George's third with 6.19 remaining here in the third quarter. And it's going to be a technical foul on the bench of Brooklyn College. So Baruch's going to have a tech free throw coming up as they trail 52 to 32. 6.19 remaining here in the third. Sorry, just trying to get this all cleared up. It's going to be, I think, a two-shot technical for the Bearcats. And then they'll resume play at the other end. And Genko knocks down the first. And she knocks down the both, extends it to 18, and Coach Lang wants some answers for uh, the technical foul coming from the bench. So a slew of changes for Baruch as Genko and both Rivera's come to the bench. Snyder, Michi, and Yi check back into the game. And it'll be Baruch's ball on the far side. So three points there for Baruch Bearcats. Really have to capitalize here basically on a two for, two for O possession opportunity. Snyder has it, Espina on her. She just checked back into the game for the Bulldogs. Zerpolo now has it on the corner, looking for options. Gives it off to Snyder in the corner, pick from Zerpolo. Snyder picks up her dribble, and I've seen that a few times where Baruka maybe picked up their dribble a little too quickly. Just keep the ball on the deck and figure out where you need to pass to next. Nice bounce pass there and Snyder nice by Snyder and able to finish. But once again, Baruch really indecisive with some of their possessions. Yeah. Stopping their dribble and then kind of forcing the turnover just because they're trapped. Yeah, fortunately, good recovery there by the Bearcats, ultimately able to get the point there. Snyder's layup. Hands in inside. It's going to be a Spina's three from the corner. No good. Rebounded there by Jamat, and she's able to finish. 5.30 remaining here in the third. And it's going to be a double dribble on Snyder, and it's going to go back to Brooklyn College. Taylor George checking back into the game with three fouls. She spent 45 seconds on the bench, and she'll replace Jasmine Hansgen on, on in the game. Trembone has it up top for Brooklyn. Can't go on her, now over to Espina. Looking for options, ball swung around as George on the right corner. Trembone up top, once again, setting up the offense for Brooklyn College and Coach Lang. Mugen has it up top. Inside to Jamat. Jamat looks like Spayu hit the deck as Jamat shot no good. George able to finish, though, on the offensive glass. Taylor George, five-foot sophomore from Whitehall, Pennsylvania. And Mugen almost forces the turnover there. And it's been really tough for Baruch to inbound on some of these possessions after a score with Brooklyn's full court trap. I think we're having a clock malfunction here as the clock has not started in the regular game. We have 4.54. And they're gonna talk about it right now. The clock wasn't running. It's at, we have it at 442. They have it at 444. And the clock's underway, and we're all set here at the Arc Arena as Trombone has it. Now to George on the left wing. Baruch trail by 20. Brooklyn College really putting their foot down here on Baruch. 
inside to Tytler, who just got checked back in. Ball stolen there by Spyu, and she's going to push the tempo. Has her pull on the left. Spyu going to go right into the lane. Now Tytler gets back, and that's going to be some tough paint presence. Ooh, Spyu, dangerous shot. Up over three defenders. And Trembone has it up top now. Gives it to Espina. Espina's three, able to knock that down and extend the lead. Genko has it, quickly pushing the pace. Millie Yi over to Valmichi, able to finish at the rim. Nice quick breakdown there of the zone by Baruch. Trembone has it now in the front court. Looking for options. Gives it up top to Mugen. Mugen had Zerpolo on her, but she gives it back to Trembone, right wing. Tyler's calling for the ball. Now George into the paint, gives it underneath to Mugen, not able to finish off glass. Nice find there by Taylor Jordan. A good offense by this Brooklyn College Bulldog team. 23 point lead for the Bulldogs. Millie Yee now has it in the front court as Baru quickly breaking down that zone. Genko straight away three. Around and out, no good. Rebounded there by Hanjin. Zerpolo steals it though. Zerpolo hits the deck, Spyu gets the loose ball. Spyu puts the ball on the deck, looking for options, going up against Tyler. Finds Genko cutting down the middle and able to lay it in. Baruch Elite trail by 21. And that's gonna be a travel there on Kayla Trembone. Another turnover there by Baruch, I mean, excuse me, by Brooklyn College, and Baruch has a chance to score again and cut the lead back to 19. And again, probably a nice two, three minutes there. And Bearcats starting to regain some of the momentum. A couple and big turnovers. Zerpolo in the corner, Pena on her. Now Genko has the corner, she replaces her. George all over Genko, looking for options. Spyu back out to Zerpolo. Spyu's pick right, now Genko gonna drive left. Looking for options baseline. Now up top, Spyu looks like she might have got poked in the face. And there is going to be a whistle here. Foul's going to be on number. They might just be calling an injury timeout. She got poked in the eye there. I don't know. I'm not really sure whose hand came across. But we're going to have nine seconds on the shot clock, and Coach Coach Rizos wants an explanation. It's going to be side out for Baruch. Spy is going to stay in the game. Nine seconds remaining here on the shot clock. Inbound to uh, George, steals it, and he's going to go coast to coast here. George lays it off glass, and did that official timeout hurt Baruch a little bit? I think so. Spyu's going around three Bulldogs here. Gives it off to Michi, who's not looking, but Yee's able to corral it. I don't know, maybe pass was for Yee. Spyu looking for options. Gives it off to Yee in the corner. Not a lot of movement on the offensive end for the Bearcats. Zerpolo now to Genko. Genko working on George. Zerpolo has it up top. Espina on her. And she's fouled, and Zerpolo will go to the line to shoot two. Nice ball movement there at the end by Baruch to find an open opportunity and send it to the, Zerpolo to the line to shoot two. We're working our asses off. We're working our butts off. We're playing, playing great defense. We're working our butts off. Zerpolo knocks down the first. Shooting 80, a press of 88% from the line this season. And she's two of two from the free throw line. So 63-42, Baruch trails. George has it over the timeline, brings it to the front court. Bounce pass to Hansgen. Back outside to George. Looks like she might have moved her feet a little too much, but it keeps the ball alive. It'll be Hansgen on the spin and around with the left hand. Mugen on the rebound. Char Still short, ball's tipped around. Espina comes away with it. And it's gonna be Hanjin and Spyu that hit the deck. Looks like the ball's Wait. gonna stay there. And there's the call, foul's yeah. gonna be on number 25, Melinda Spyu. That's gonna be her first. Act surprisingly so, the way she's had to, been, had to battle inside the, yeah. the paint. That's impressive within itself. That's been a three from the right corner, and that'll extend the lead to 24. Now Spyu gets the ball into the front court, gonna race right down the lane. Ebelhalp shot, block, nope. Mugen's gonna hit her on the arm, it's gonna send Ebelhalp to the line to shoot two. Ebelhalp, two 
shots. And Abelhoff no good on the first. Chanel Jamont back into the game as Jasmine Hansgen comes to the bench. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Alex Mugen's going to come to the bench as Pena has it on the right wing. Neville Hopped 0 for 2 from the line. Jamont now has the top of the key. Pena back to Pena up top. Zerpolo draped on her. Looking for options. She goes left into the paint. Hand off there to Hansgen. Able to finish with the left hand off the rim. Nice off the glass. Nice play there. Almost thrown away there as Genko gets the inbound, looking for options. Up to Ebelhaupt. Ebelhaupt trying to go back door, can't find anybody. Ball might have been tipped as Pena comes away with it. Jamat now has it. Cross court to Taylor George. Taylor George, right wing three, hits that one. Knocks that one down, Taylor George. And now Daniela Zerpolo trying to break down the press again. Baruch playing very sloppy right now as Genko has it, gives it over to Zerpolo up top. Now inside to Ebelhoff. Ebelhoff off glass, able to finish. Baruch really need to stop, get a two for one opportunity here at the end of the third. Pena's floater. Offensive foul on Michelle Pena. It took a second to get the call. The refs had to confer and it's gonna be a call in Baruch's favor. And I think everyone kind of was wondering what was going on there, because the call was not immediate with the refs having to confer. Yeah, a little bit of delayed call there. 25 seconds remaining here. Baruch can get the two for one now. Trail 71-44, spy you right into the lane. Nice step back move. Knocks that one down, a half spin, step back jumper by Melinda Spayu. Now Pena's gonna push for Brooklyn College. 10 seconds left. Espina gives it inside to Jamat. It was from Pena. Mott shot is no good, but she gets fouled with 3.7 remaining here in the third. Natalie Ebelhaupt. Jamat off on the first. Only a 49% free throw shooter on the season on 51 attempts. Make it 52 attempts. And she knocks down the second. One second left, ball's tipped away by Jamad and that'll do it here at the Arc Arena. Baruch Trail 72 to 46. Coach Coach Rizosa and, her, and his ladies have a lot to do to get back into this one here in the fourth quarter. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Built the City University of New York. Be exceptional. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. My greatest personal discovery has been that I am capable of doing things that I didn't know I was capable of doing. To be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, all of those things came together very nicely in one package in Division Three. Colleges get. And welcome back to the Arc Arena here on the campus of Baruch College. Baruch 46, Brooklyn College 72 here at the end of three. We're moments away from the start of the fourth quarter, just waiting for the teams to get back on the court. And it's really gotten away from these Bearcats here in the third and fourth quarter, right? Excuse me, on the third, second and third quarter, outscored by nine in the second, outscored by 13 in the third. And that's going to set it up for a 26-point deficit. And really, it's about just seeing what your team can do in these type of situations, Brian, when you're, when you're down. And it's really going to be a learning experience for some of these young ladies. Exactly. And we will see this uh, Brooklyn College Bulldogs team again, whether it's in conference play or potentially even a playoff matchup. So it's, it's really these 10 minutes, even though this one might be out of reach, they're still important. 
We're in the fourth quarter of our first game of our doubleheader. We'll have about a 10, 20 minute, 10, 15 minute intermission between the two games, but definitely tune in for the men's game. Brooklyn College at Baruch here at the Arc Arena as the first shot goes off from Espina and Zerpolo comes away with it. It'll be Spyu in the corner looking for options. Crossover move. She goes all the way baseline looking for options. It's Ebelhaupt in the corner. She'll put up the three. Ebelhaupt shot's a little long, and it's going to be rebounded there by Espina. Pena, nice spin move there on the closing down of Spyu. Pena looking for options there. I think it went off the hands of either Snyder or Ebelhaupt last, and it'll stay with Brooklyn College. It'll be Trembone to inbound underneath. Tytler. Hansgen, Espina, Pena, and Trembone for Brooklyn College, where it's going to be Zerpolo, Snyder, Genko, Spyu, and Ebelhaupt for Baruch. As Pena has it now left wing, swings it around. Hansgen has it. She's fouled by Snyder. Nope, it's going to be too many steps. And that was a very interesting call there. I, don't, I didn't really see the steps there, but it'll work in Baruch's favor, and it'll go back to the Bearcats. Yeah, it looks like almost a little bit of contact-induced travel, where she, maybe she got pushed and took an extra step. But nonetheless, refs call the travel. Bearcats get possession. Coach Lang may have a little bit of a point on this one, though, as he's asking for either a jump ball or a foul. Yeah. I can see where he's coming from. But nonetheless, it'll be Baruch's ball. A little bit over uh, about a minute gone here in the first. As Snyder has it, gives it off to Ebelhop. Finds their polo up top. The free throw line jumper is good. Knocks that one down. Good they ball. Knows a polo. Yeah. Three of seven from the field today for eight points is Zerpolo. Pena now to Trembone and right wing. Tyler trying to find position. Ball swung around. Espina in the corner. And it's going to be a timeout for Coach Lang with Brooklyn College with 8.45 remaining. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel. Baruch Bearcats broadcasting. And a quick bucket and a, quick bucket and a couple of poor offensive possessions there for Brooklyn. And Coach Lang wants to talk things over. Yeah, you're seeing, uh, you're seeing some good things out of his Bearcat offense. Regardless of the scoreboard right now, that... Uh, previous possession, there's a lot of good ball movement there. They found Dan Danielle Zerpolo at the foul line. She was able to hit the hit the jumper there, but again, just good ball movement. And even though this, like we said, this one may be out of reach, it's still very important to see what the girls can do here in this situation. And this probably has been has to be one of the better offensive games for the Bearcats, shooting 40 percent on 18 of 45. Yeah, we've seen nights where they won and you know only shot in the low 30s, even high 20 percent from the field. Exactly. So they're, they're doing a good job of executing. Just unfortunately, we don't have much of an answer for this Brooklyn offense down low. Yeah, Bar Baruch right now getting out rebounded 41 to 21, including plus 11 for Brooklyn College on the offensive end. Yeah, it's, it's really tough to contain an offense like that. So we're back. Brooklyn College will come out of the huddle. It's going to be Ebelhoff, Zerpolo, Spyu, Snyder, and Genko for Baruch. And for Brooklyn College will be Tytler, Hansgen, Trembone, Pena, and Espina. Now Trembone has it up top. Snyder out on her at the three-point line. Espina comes around right wing looking for a cross-court pass, finds Pena. Pena took too many steps before she got her shot off, and it'll be another turnover. And that's probably what Coach Lang was just talking about in that timeout. Yeah. Genko now into the front court. Has Snyder. Right wing. She's pressed by Pena. Now gives it to Spyu. The defense collapses a little bit. Spyu gets fouled off glass. No good. And she'll go to the line to shoot two. Nice splitting of the defense there by number 25, Melinda Spyu. Impressive, really. She just even got that shot off right there through about three Bulldog defenders. Almost went in, too. With Tytler at, at the basket, able to come for uh, weak side help. Yeah. It was a nice play there by Spyu. She knocks down the first free throw, an opportunity to cut it back to 22. Long rebound there. And it's going to go off Spyu last. Nice hustle play there by Spyu, and Trembone will inbound on the far side for the Bulldogs. Coach Coach Rizos, very vocal on the bench, trying to pump up his team. Pena now has it up top. Crossover mover on Schneider, gets into the lane, trying to find Tytler or Trembone on the left there, but it goes off Baruch, and it'll stay with Pena underneath. Just 
Now Espina inside to Tyler. She turns around. Jumper is no good. Rebounded there by Spayu. And Baruch will look to push. It'll be Genko swung around to Snyder. Corner three. Around and out. No good. Tyler comes away with the rebound for Brooklyn College. Pena to push for the Bulldogs. Brings it into the front court. Finds Trebone in the corner. Back up top to Pena. Balls quickly moved around. Back to Trebone. Inside to Tyler. Sp spins around. Her shot no good. Hands in on the rebound. Looking for options. Gives it outside to Pena. Corner to Trebone. Excuse me, Espina. Now to Hanjin. Her shot no good. Ebelhoff comes away with that rebound. And Genko will push for the Bearcats. Zerpolo into the front court. Left wing. Has Bayou right wing. Trembone on her. Spayu dribbles into the corner. It's going to be Zerpolo on the elbow. Ebelhoff back out to Spayu. It's going to be back. It's going to go off of, I think, Trembone last. He had her hand in, and it'll be go back to the Bearcats. Mugen, Jamat, and George checking into the game. Bulldogs settle into that 2 3 zone. Ebelhoff underneath. Her shot a little too strong. Jamat comes away with that rebound. Seven minutes to go here in the ballgame. Baruch Trail, 72-49. George inside to Jamat. Jamat right hand, able to finish off glass. Nice play there by Chanel Jamat. A nice find there by Taylor George. Snyder has it up top. Zerpolo right wing. Ball moved around left to right. Genko inside to Ebelhop. Over to Snyder. Now to Zerpolo. Zerpolo, deep jumper. Way short, but she's fouled. Foul is going to be on number four, Alexandra Mugen. That's going to be her fourth with six and a half remaining here in the ballgame. Baruch trail by 25. Zerpolo goes to the line, shooting 88% from the line this season. Off on the first. She misses the second. Has her hands on the rebound, but Jermott strips it from her. Trembone has it now right wing. Espina quarter three around and in. Knocks that one down. Gets a little bit of a hometown bounce, even on the road. Snyder to Genko into the corner to Ebelhoff. Looking for options. Going to be Snyder back up top. Dangerous pass. Genko now has it right wing. Back up top to Snyder. Inside the Spayu, top of the key. Spins on Jamak, goes right into her chest. She's fouled as she hits the deck. Hey guys, guys, go for Foul's going to be there on number 33, Chanel Jamat. That's going to be her third of the evening. Ebelhoff has it now on the baseline, looking for options. Dribbles out, tries to find Spy underneath, passes a little high. Mugen comes away with it, and Trembone will push for the Bulldogs. Right into the lane, George back door. Nice find there by Jamad. George can't finish. It's Mugen who gets fouled as she goes for the rebound, and a nice find there by Chanel Jamad to find a cutting Taylor George, who's unable to finish at the rim. In, inbound right into Jamad, able to finish as Baruch's defense fell asleep underneath. Spayu has it up top, working on Jamad. Cool left wing three by Genko, no good, a little short. Mugen comes away with that rebound, well, he's gonna push. Trembone. Left wing three by Taylor George. Knocks that one down, and George starting to have a monster game. 20, not starting to, 23 on 10 of 16 shooting. Wow. Leading all scorers from the field. Ebelhoff, baseline jumper, no good. Might have hit the foam there, and it's going to be Br Brooklyn to push. It'll be Trembone, Espina, left baseline jumper, no good. Batted around. Mugen comes away with it, a little too strong. Snyder comes away with the rebound for the Bearcats. And it's going to be a timeout for Baruch with 4.41 remaining. You're watching Baruch basketball 
on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. Division three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. It's not just about basketball or it's not just about school, it's about developing yourself as a person altogether. And welcome back to the ARC Arena. And you know, Brian, we talked about it at the beginning of the season. The, the women's team here at Baruch, very young. And even with those midseason transfers, you're just talking about two more sophomores. You add a little more size to this team in the next couple of years, you can really see they have a lot of pieces that can make them a successful basketball team. Absolutely. And as this group gets more and more experience, you're just going to see them play better. And what, a, what an improvement we've seen from the beginning of the season. Just overall, the chemistry. Yeah, and the ball moves a lot quicker. And yes, also some players are just becoming more comfortable. You can tell like a Val Michi, a Millie Yee. Exactly. Both very more comfortable just pulling the trigger and getting into their offense a little bit earlier in the ballgame. Yep, and then to add additions like Francis Snyder and Danielle Zerpolo really makes a difference for the Bearcats here. And we've seen it in the play. Genko now inside to Snyder. Shot clock running down. Ball's loose on the deck. Espina and Ebelhoff come away with it. It's going to be... Shot clock violation on Baruch. So it's going to go back to Brooklyn College. Val Michi, Millie Yi, and Caitlin Rivera check back into the game. As Genko, Ebelhoft, and Snyder come to the bench. And a game like this, when you're down 33 points, it's really about do you keep that desire to keep playing? Do you keep wanting to win basketball like each possession? Exactly. Because you know the game's a, a little bit out of reach with four minutes remaining here in the ballgame. Really just kind of maintaining that intensity. Taylor George, three's no good. Rebounded there by Jamad, able to lay that one in. And Spayu will dribble it up for the Bearcats. Millie Yee has a right wing, Taylor George on her. Looking for options, it's gonna be Spy you in the elbow. Up top to Val Michi, Michi's gonna drive. Smacked away by George, it's Jamat up back up to George. And George gonna not lay it in off the left rim. Maybe a little too much time as Spy you tries to get it ahead. Mugen on the steal, ball's just loose now in the mid court. Rivera hits the deck, and it'll be a spinner that comes away with it for Brooklyn. Trembone will have it up top for the Bulldogs. We've seen a lot of commotion right around that mid-court point all game. A lot of turnovers both ways. Sometimes right back and forth on the same play. Yep. Mugen right wing three. Shot's a little strong. Can't finish, but it'll be Jamat underneath. And lets people know how strong she is putting two, <laughs> two biceps up. It'll be Millie E right wing up top to Rivera. Looking for options, Michi has it left wing. Mugen all over Michi. Michi looking for options. Can be spy you once again. Baruch deep into the shot clock. Four seconds on the clock. Have to get something up. It's gonna be spy you out to Michi. Ball tipped away, and it's gonna be another shot clock violation. We talk about we talked about where will Baruch be, and are they gonna keep competing? Well, the answer is yes for this Brooklyn College team. Is back to back defensive stands and back to back shot clock violations for the Bearcats. Yeah, Brooklyn really put, putting the pressure. Bearcats unable to even get a shot off. So they're definitely not letting up on their defensive intensity. And you can see some of these Bearcats extremely tired. Spy you, hands on her knees on that last stoppage of play. Really um, out there for the entire 40 minutes tonight as the three there by Espina is no good. Spy you comes away with the rebound and she's going to push. Espina on her left wing looking for options. Takes the pick from Rivera. Gets the switch to Trembone. Pass inside to Rivera. Stolen. Trembone comes away with it. Up top to Espina. Espina and Spayu collide heavy. And it's going to be a blocking foul on Spayu. And it's going to send Grace Martinez Espina to the line. The senior guard from Freeport, New York. Kellenberg High School out on Long Island. Only shooting 50% from the charity stripe. 
You can also tell from this roster right here, David, that Brooklyn's definitely a senior heavy team. About three or four starting girls as seniors. So that'll really just kind of speak towards the level of play Coach Lang will expect out of the girls with so much experience coming in, whereas the Bearcats are nearly the exact opposite, only one returning girl on the floor. So you're seeing a little bit of that difference in experience right now as well. Yeah, absolutely. Right now it's, uh, I think the, the part where it really hurt Baruch the most is when they started getting into that full court trap yep. with Brooklyn College. And then from there, Bar Baruch really just fed into that and was able to turn the ball over a bunch yeah. and really give the ball back to Brooklyn. If you notice, I think Baruch's most successful possessions have been those transition possessions where they haven't allowed Brooklyn College to set up into that full court press or trap exactly, yep. and force turnovers by the Bearcats. Valmichi will shoot two here. Knocks down the first. 28 turnovers for the Bearcats, 20 for the Bulldogs tonight. And knocks down the second. So Valmichi goes two of two from the line. 36 point game here at the Arc Arena. A minute and a half remaining. It'll be Trembone in the left wing for Brooklyn College. Yi in covering her. Now Tyler gets the ball at the free throw line and air balls a jump shot. And it'll go back to Baruch. My Helia, Ro Helia Ross in the game for the Bearcats. Rivera has it up top. Tytler on her. It's Yi, and it's going to be a travel. Sorry, it's going to be a moving screen on Rivera, and it'll go back to Brooklyn College with a minute and 12 as they inbound on the far side. The good thing about this, you know, losing in a fashion that's probably not, you know, favorable if you're the Bearcats, you get to come out and do it again on Saturday nights. You don't have to sleep on this loss for too long. Exactly. Excuse me, Saturday afternoon at 12 p.m. against Lehman College. Yeah, we've seen some of these breaks uh, at the end of semester, close to 10 days, even more than that. So at least the girls have a chance to really come back. And we've seen that at certain points in the season as well, where we're coming off a bad loss, and then whether the men's or women's team, they're able to come out and really respond to that loss and with a win. This will move Brooklyn College to four and one in the conference, seven and six overall, and Baruch will slide to two and four in the conference and three and eight overall. So definitely battled in some games, might have lost this game probably midway through that third quarter. Yep. But something to build off for this Baruch team as they let up another three there to number two, Michelle Pena. And an opportunity to regroup when you have Lehman coming in here on what will it be a big day on Alumni Day. So you already know that that um, it's going to be just an yeah. exciting day here at the Arc Arena. Yeah, you're definitely going to feel the energy in the Arc Arena. So hopefully the both the girls and men's team can really channel that. And Brooklyn College really going to run this one out. And that's going to do it for us here at the Arc Arena for the first game of our double header. Taylor George really having a huge game. 23 points on 10 of 18 shooting. Chanel Jamat. 9 of 13 from the field for 19 and 12, a double-double, and also a double-double for Alexander Mugen. 5 for 17, but dropped 12 points, 14 boards. And for Baruch, your leading scorer tonight is going to be Melinda Spayu, the only Bearcat, unfortunately, in double digits. Had 14 points, 8 boards, but Brian, 10 turnovers, and that's going to be part of her game where she really has to work on. Absolutely. We saw a lot of those, like we discussed earlier, kind of come about in that mid-court point where – we need to kind of reset the offense, and instead we rushed a little bit for some unnecessary turnovers that ultimately helped Brooklyn break away with that lead, as well as their inside game down low. But again, all lessons here, David. So now it's just a matter of really kind of fixing these mistakes in the next matchup, and again, you have the opportunity to do it this Saturday against Lehman. Yeah, and you get the bounce right back. So this has been the first game of our double header. Don't forget, we still have a second game, the undefeated CUNY Baruch Bearcats coming in against a Brooklyn College team that just lost their first CUNY game of the week a couple days back, and it's going to be a great matchup here at the Arc Arena. We'll be back in about 20 minutes for pregame of the second game of our doubleheader. Once again, your final score, Brooklyn College 90, Baruch 51. You're watching Baruch Basketball on YouTube channel, Baruch Bearcats Broadcasting.